and the other Croatian players on board too with the white pieces against Sergei Karyakin. Okay, so we look at Karyakin's game. This time it's an English opening. Karyakin plays very quickly. I believe he had some preparation against English opening <laughs> for yeah. the match, as well as any other opening, <laughs> in fact. Every opening. Every, every single opening, right. Because you never know what Magnus will play. Oh, that's quite interesting. White went for, yeah, this bishop b6, which is shown now on our uh, blue board. It's a very nice positional system. So you give the bishop away, you build your play on light squares, and you try to claim that, well, a black spawn, they're not really weak, but those double pawns, right, they're not playing such a, such a major role. And in the center, you have kind of a pawn up. Mm -hmm. True. Five. Rook to d1, protecting d3. White is planning to play 2e3 later on to cover f, uh, to cover d4 square. So rook d1 for that. b6 might become weak one day after queen b5, knight a4. So bishop to f6, and then e3 I expect, e3, a3 to cover some squares. And then, yeah, it's a very good system for blitz because it's much easier to play with white usually. Yes, a3, king h8 and e3. And, uh, well, Croatian player Marin Bosioc, he already has some advantage on the clock, I think. Yes, he is still above three minutes and Sergei down to two and a half minutes. Mm, yeah, I'm correct in thinking. So, well, he made all the obvious moves, so to speak. Yeah, bishop f7, an interesting maneuver. So probably to h5. Probably he's planning to go to h5. No, bishop, bishop e8. Ah, oh, first, bishop e8 to threaten... Attack, yeah, to threaten knight d4. Which would almost trap the queen. <laughs> right. Bishop e8, you probably play queen c2 in this case. And then he he might go. Bishop h5. Yeah, it doesn't look like yeah. Queen b3. b3. But then you can go bishop f7. Queen b3, yes, bishop f7, bishop and queen f7. a4. No. Queen c2. Why, why just decline the ambitious. repetition? Why just decline the repetition? Now bishop. And h5. bishop h5. And it doesn't matter uh, where, where this bishop goes from, e8 or f7. Mm -hmm. So we with one more move played, we get the position I was talking about. Bishop h5. Rook d2. d2. Releasing the pin immediately. As I said, white has very easy play, I mean, very easy position to play. Rook, Rook f7, seven. even though Karyakin's maneuvers I sort of like. Rook f7 to go to d7. Yes, it's a nice one. And d3 might start hanging a little bit. Well, for black to really improve the, oh, pardon, for white to really improve the position, he will have to somehow carry out d3, d4, but I don't know if it's possible. Uh, well, rook f7, and somehow white makes a, a long pause here. Yes, he has some time advantage, but now he's using it all. Yeah, so it's 157 for Karyakin and already less than 150 for Marin Bosiojic. It's quite interesting what he comes up with. D4. He was calculating the pawn D4, and of course, you normally check what's, what happens if your opponent takes. But Karyakin, without too much of a. Yeah, e4. almost immediately, he goes for e4. And then knight e1 was played. So the knight is quite passive on e1, I has, have to say. And then not rook d7, but rook c7. Rook c7, queen b1. Now both sides will double the rooks on c file. Rook a c8. No, knight e7 first. Go into a nice d5, d5 square. Right. Uh, yeah, white is not very comfortable. Yes, this f3 was perhaps not the best. f3. I'm not sure of f3 because you create yourself a weakness on e3. Bishop g5 immediately and f4. So he understood it's yes. not very good. So he decided to. Well, at least after f4, you block uh, black's possible attack on the king side. And rook c2, doubling the rooks. So ideally, white would really exchange all the rooks and try to leave black's, uh, black with the bishop on f6 mm -hmm. against the knight. 
and the and let's yes. say an extra pawn in the center. So still, I'd claim that white does very well. Rook c6 was played. Uh, how about it's funny how it looks like a fog, but you always have rook takes c2, of course. Knight c3, c3 back. Knight c3 back. So now he wouldn't mind the repetition, obviously. But bishop but goes to for win, for sure. bishop goes to f7. Threatening bishop p3. You know, sometimes. actually, I actually thought that uh, he should have still play knight a7, knight a7. Yeah, just to just force rooks. the exchanges. Mm -hmm. So all four rooks going from the board. I don't believe knight would be caught on b4. b4. Okay, at least protecting b3 square. B4. But then takes takes might become a weak pawn. This one. On B file, uh, probably he's getting B five though. Uh, hang on, is Bishop D four an available tactic? He he's taking, yeah, Bishop D four. Wow. Now Karyakin is, I think he's winning. Bishop D four. You yes, cannot you win back the piece on C three. Yeah, you cannot pin the Bishop because Bishop E three also comes with a check. So you have to basically you have to take on D four, and he's uh, doing this. Two Queen takes and then C three falls. King h1, rook c3, and yes. Very well played by Sergei Kayakin. I think this will be a resignation soon from the Croatian uh, player, uh, or are we missing c3, something? Rook c3, rook c3, rook, no, queen b2. What's queen b2? Rook c4 is there, but then you swap the queens and you go rook c7. It's still not over. It's still not over. And if knight d5? No, he uh, takes take on, on b4. Seven. First he takes on b4, a b4, a b4 is just an intimate. No, I mean so 95 now without uh... Now 95. Yeah, right. Protecting the protecting the rook. Absolutely winning. No back rank threats because you have the bishop. So bishop g8. Two pawns up for black. This is just winning for Kayakin. I think we should switch because Yeah, this let's game check what Magnus already. Carson is doing. Wow, that's opposite side castling on board one. And Magnus has won already. Ah, Magnus has won has already just against won. Saleh Marsale. Yes, we should see that game later on once the rest of the games are over. But I think there are other exciting games still going on. I think so far we we uh, stick with we stick with Karyakin. We'll stay here until the opponent resigns. Yeah, well look, it's like two seconds he it was. It's a one move he made on two seconds and still White is very short on time. Uh some technical task though in front of Sergei Karyakin. So his one of his extra pawns is safely blocked. I must say it won't be that easy for him. Uh, probably it will. Knight A two, knight C two. Bishop B no, king g7, bringing the king in the center. Yes, he can play bishop. Oh, well, bishop b3, knight d4. Yeah. It's not as easy as it seemed. Oh, that's, that's interesting. What's going on here? h3. Alright, now he's going to take a 4, play knight d5 and both things will be here. now knight d5 I, uh, i'm not sure i mean if it's a bishop's ending i'm not sure if black is winning despite being two pawns up Might but he's be... going down on time two one and he loses on time he lost on time already yeah he dropped the king and somehow he was so slow in this <laughs> moment yeah he was so slow so yeah uh, convince probably he would have won anyway but it's easier when the opponent just suddenly loses on time so magnus carson has won Karyakin also wins. Rajabov is still playing on board three. He's two pawns up against Benjamin Bok. Rajabov still plays. Ah, oh, that's the position from Timur Rajabov. Uh, apparently very short on time. He, well, he's visibly nervous. He played and moved very fast. Uh, opposite colored bishops are there. So it might be not easy for Rajabov. Knight d7 now. Knight d7 now. Ah, knight d7 is already on the board. g6. Not easy at all. Knight takes b6 played. And after bishop e5, he can go knight d5. Yes, strangely enough, exchanging Beautiful. knights. But yes. yeah, making sure he's winning here. Two oh, just take, very far. Just take king d5. Mm -hmm. And then bishop protects the b pawn. And king helps the g pawn to promote. Yes, that's an so that's easy absolutely win from now. winning position. And almost losing and on time, but not. Yes, he didn't lose on time just to have a time to resign. <laughs> so Rajabov. 
Rajabov is on three out of three, and so is Magnus Carlsen and, and Sergei Karyakin. And Dominguez, who has and beaten Kozhu. So four players Wait out of top ten. Wait a second, is still playing, not anymore. Grishuk won he Rook and won. Bishop against the Rook. Wow. <laughs> that's that's interesting, they really. They make it somewhat easier. In blitz rapid and classical chess, you expect your opponent to defend. Yeah, well, I'd say uh, other way around. In blitz, it's somewhat harder to to, pr to, to, to defend. No, no, to defend. Yeah, I, I, so I was th saying that's that why. Yeah, that's why. is difficult. That's why. So it's not easier for the stronger side to create threats. You basically no, no, create, no, the, create same, the same the threats, same. right? You try to reach the field opposition, but it's somewhat harder to, yeah, not no, to get to confused. No, completely different. You have no time, only two second increment, because in rapid, at least you have 10 seconds as an increment. Right. That's Grishuk analyzing with Tomaszewski. And there's still a game going on. Everybody's watching that game. Who is that? Isn't it uh, Mamedov? Mamedov. It must be Mamedov with the white pieces and I don't know who his opponent is. Mamedov uh, was on the podium, as you said, at the European just a week ago in Estonia. Well, I don't see him yet. He is not among the leaders. He must be, no? no probably he's he didn't on, win. Yeah, he's playing against Yakovenko and it's a draw. So it was a draw, Mamedov against uh, Yakovenko. Oh, wait a second. Do I have the right? No. Is it? No. Wait a second. No, I'm, I'm confused. Yes, it is. Mamedov Yakovenko. Okay, so, well, let's check. Magnus Carson's game, I believe. Uh, I can't no find it. No? I have to say, I can't find it. Uh, no, I was to say, let's check the clock. So, how it goes. Uh, we played three rounds in and it's. Hour, well, basically. almost in one hour. Okay, we still There's have still a game. It's Vahab Shanal, the only player from Turkey, playing. Against uh, Jure Borisek of Slovenia. Ah, Black is rushing with his pawns. I don't know what. Whitehead, a rook apparently.